Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I went from this image to that image in Photoshop. Alright guys, my name is Philip and let's just run right into Photoshop. Now, what I want to do is I want to create a nice black and white image where the attention is on the tree and on these nice clouds because we have the sun rays coming out from the clouds. So we're going to you know, put some attention on them uh, and then, yeah, just make something really nice, cool black and white. I like especially this foreground part here with these uh, stripes in this parking area. It's a very random image, but it's going to be pretty cool in the end. So let's get going. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to darken down some areas. For that, I'm going to create a curve adjustment layer by clicking on the little symbol. I'm just going to bring it down just a little bit to something like that maybe. Once I have done that, because I have the layer mask selected right now, I can hit Command and I on my keyboard, which will invert the layer mask and therefore hide the whole effect. Hitting G on my keyboard, I get my gradient tool. And with a white color, I can now drag and drop it up to the areas I would like to darken a little bit. And that's that one and that's that one. And it's just ever so slightly, just a tiny bit darker. And uh, oh, actually, hang on, we're going to hit B on the keyboard, make that nice and large and bring that in the foreground here with an opacity of 30%, especially here in that area. We're going to bring that back later again. So it's going to be nice and bright, especially these white areas here. Cool. Let's have a look at the before and after. Yeah, that is the subtle change I needed to do. Awesome. Now that we have done that, the next thing is to brighten up the area on the tree. And in order to brighten up the tree, I'm going to use the exact same technique. I'm just going to click on the curve adjustment layer and increase the brightness to something like that maybe. Let's make that small and hide it somewhere. I'm going to hit Command and I just as the same and hide the effect. And with my brush and opacity and 30%, I'm just going to bring that brightness through in the tree area right here. Okay, let's make that a little bit smaller and make sure we really have the tree as bright as we want it to have. Okay, that's not bad at all. Cool, now we have that. The next thing would be, I suppose we can make it black and white now. So what I can do is I'm going to hit Command, Alt, Shift and E on my keyboard, which will create something which is called a stamp visible. And a stamp visible is copying everything that is currently visible onto a new layer. Once I have that, and I have done that right here, you can see everything is on a new layer. I'm, I'm going to hit Command, Shift and U, which will desaturate the layer we have right now and make it black and white. And that is the basis of what we need to do right here. Now, the thing is, it's still a little bit too dark in the, in the tree area. I'm realizing now that it's black and white. So let's bring that up a little bit more. I'm going to create another curve adjustment layer and bring it up to something like that, maybe. Cool. Command and I to hide the effect as usual. And then go in with the white brush and just bring the brightness through in the tree itself. Just like that. And that's not bad at all. Cool. Now... What you can see there is this leading line here from this line on the parking ground. And this leading line should theoretically lead to this tree because it would, it would just look a little bit better. So for that, we're going to have to move things around a little bit. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do this right now. Now, first thing, we need another stamp visible. So I'm going to hit Command, Alt, Shift and E because I need all the information we have currently in the image on a new layer. OK, so now we have the new layer here. What I'm going to do then, I'm going to hit M on my keyboard, which brings up the marquee tool. And with that, I make a nice selection on my sky, uh, something like that, maybe. Once I have that, I'm going to hit Command and J, which will sort of copy everything which I had just selected onto a new layer. And if I hit V now, I can move this stuff around a little bit. OK, so I'm going to make sure that this leading line is leading perfectly to this tree. Once I'm happy, I'm going to hit S. Okay, oops, sorry, I'm going to hit B on my keyboard to get the brush back, and that is all we need to, uh, to do for that. I'm not even worried about this sort of edge which has now been created on the side, because we are also going to mirror the left side onto the right side, so that it's really symmetrical, especially in the background, and that we have these nice sun rays which we have on the left here, that they are also on the right. So for now, I'm just concerned about the line we have created when I just move the stuff around, and you can see what I mean if you concentrate right onto this area right here, and we can get up that, again, red, there's a word Words, we can get rid of this very easy. I'm just going to create a layer mask by hitting the little Japanese symbol in the lower right hand corner. Once I have done that, I'm going to hit B on my uh, keyboard to get the brush as usual. And with an opacity of say 30%, I'm going to, in a black color, I'm going to get rid of that line just to make a nice and smooth transition between the two, uh, between the two layers essentially. Okay, I'm going to continue to do that until I'm done and then I'm going to bring you back guys. And we're back and I have removed the line between the, the top part of the image essentially and the lower part. Now we have just a little bit of an issue left here which is the original shadow of the tree went this way and now ends in the middle of nowhere which is not really what we can have, right? 
Okay, let's do a quick fix for that. Let's hit Command, Alt, Shift and E on the keyboard to get another stamp visible with all the information we have so far on a new layer. Once we have that, I'm going to hit S on my keyboard, which brings up the Clone Stamp tool. And I'm going to select a source somewhere over here, for example, right? And I'm just going to, with an opacity of 30 to 40% or something like that, I'm just going to start to essentially overwrite that shadow area with brighter areas from the side. So essentially, I'm removing the shadow from the area, all right? Don't worry about repetitive patterns in this kind of area. We can always go in later with the spot healing brush tool or something like that and can get rid of those then. Cool. So now what we have to do, we have to, of course, bring the shadow back. And I'm just going to do that very quickly by using a curve adjustment layer. I'm going to bring it down to something like that, maybe. Okay. Let's invert that by hitting Command and uh, I on the keyboard. <laughs> and once I have done that, I'm going to hit B on my keyboard to get the brush. And now I'm just going to paint a shadow in there. I'm going to make sure that I start at the tree about the same width, but I'm going to be, of course, incredibly fast now. That... Let's make the brush actually a little bit, a little bit, no, a little bit less hard. Bear with me. Let's do a hardness of forty percent, maybe something like that, and maybe an opacity of twenty percent. And let's start to smooth that out a little bit. And I'm just gonna, you know, paint that in there very, very roughly right now. I'm not be taking great care of form or shape. <laughs> okay. And let's hit X to invert the colors to something like that. Maybe it's not bad. It's, it's it's doing the thing for now. Now we have to do the similar thing for the other side right here. So I'm going to go back to the stamp visible we have created before. I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to get the clone stamp, the clone, the clone stamp tool. I'll select my source over here, and I'm just going to paint away this shadow right here as well, because it's just not not right. And once I have done that, I'm going to go back to the curvature smith layer, and get, blah, 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 hit B on my keyboard, make that brush a tiny bit larger because the stem is actually wider. And with an opacity of, say, 20%, I'm just going to bring a little bit of darkness into this middle part here between the shadow we have already and the tree itself, just to connect these two. All right. And again, I'm doing a very rough and ugly job here, but you get the idea, right? You can paint to your heart's content, of course. Let's say something like that. And let's remove it from here just a tiny bit. Okay, cool. Now we have a more or less better shadow. At least it doesn't lead into nowhere. Now that we have done that, it's, I think it's time that we can mirror our image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more stamp visible hitting Command, Alt, Shift, and E on the keyboard. Press M on my keyboard to get the marquee tool once more. And now I select the part I want to mirror. And I want to mirror about this part, I suppose. And once I have selected that, I'm going to hit Command and J, which will duplicate that. I'm going to hit Command and T, right-click that part, and say Flip Horizontally. And that's going to do exactly that. It's going to flip it horizontally. Now, I can move it around now a little bit. And I'm going to bring it to... Hmm, let's hit Command and H on the keyboard to hide the lines around the area. And let's just try to merge them nicely to something like that, maybe. That's not too bad. I like that. Let's hit enter once we are happy. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a layer mask on this particular layer, which has the half information of the right side. Create a layer mask, which is now there. And now with my brush and an opacity of, let's say, 30 to 40%, I'm going to go in and I'm going to remove the layer from certain areas, right? So for example, from here, let's go back like that. Okay. And uh, maybe a little bit from, no, the other way. Mm hmm Okay, let me see what we can do here. Let's get that tree in here. There we go. Make that brush nice and small. So it's going to take me just a little bit to, you know, get the get the trees in the way we want them. Not just the trees, the one tree, essentially. I'm going to remove the mirror side also from here because we don't... I mean, we want to have, like, the original tree shape, right? We made it, <laughs> so we want to keep it. And also everything down here, we don't really have to mirror. So I can theoretically bring back the original in the whole area here. Um, because why wouldn't we, right? Something like that. The main purpose of the mirroring is that we have the the sun rays, or the, yeah, well, you know, the, the lightning, the lightning rays. The light is consistent in the sky, and we also have this very interesting cloud pattern. Also, I'm going to make my brush a bit larger with an opacity of 20%. I'm going to click here a couple of times because I remember there were some nice small clouds in this area, just like that. And I think it does a very nice effect and it's going to look interesting at the end. Now, let's get going and do one more stamp visible. Command, Alt, Shift, and E. Today I'm doing these things all the time, but why wouldn't I, I suppose? And what we're going to... No, don't stop painting. What we're going to do is we're going to work on the lighting now. Uh, I would like to start with using the Camera Raw filter. And there is the Clarity Slider. And one day, if it has loaded up... Yes, there we go. 
if I just move that clarity slider to the right, it does something very interesting with the ground and also the clouds and the, the light in general in the sky actually. And it's something I actually like a lot. And I must have had some dust on my lens. How horrible is that? Okay, so for now, what I'll do, I'll increase it to something like, let's just say something like this. I'm going to hit OK. And of course, the effect is also affecting areas where I don't necessarily want it, such as the, the crown of the tree itself. For that, I'm going to create a layer mask on my layer. And with my brush, to, uh, let's say this size, something like that, and an opacity of 30%, we can also go in a little bit. Um, I'm just going to remove the effect again from the tree area. I don't want this tree area to be this hardly affected. Okay, that's not bad. And i also not the biggest fan of what it does in the corner areas here, because we don't actually need that. We're going to take care of this later, because it's going to be incredibly dark later. Nobody should see anything there. Cool, to something like this. Now let's have a look at that sky before and after. Yes, I'll do, I do love what it does to the clouds, and I'm very happy with this effect. Let's leave that on. We also do not actually need it in this very back right here, so let's just bring that down a little bit. Awesome. Let's continue to work on this particular lighting. So the first thing we have to do is we have to darken things down a little bit more. And in order to do so, I'm going to hit Command, Alt, Shift, and E on the keyboard once more, just to get the stamp visible. I'm going to change its blend mode from normal down to overlay. This is going to give a nice darkness in the foreground especially, which of course I don't want everywhere. So with a layer mask, I'm going to invert the layer mask, and I'm going to make sure that I only bring this darkness through in the... Oh, that's a very high opacity. We don't want it like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to bring it through in the areas where I don't want everything to be visible, including this foreground area here. And I also want to bring it through a little bit down there, and especially on these sides. We do not need so much light there. The attention has to be on the tree, remember? So I also can go over here once or twice. That's cool. We can always bring that back. Okay, let's darken that down. A little bit here, okay. Also, maybe a little bit on the top. Cool. We can also darken down the top a little bit more. Now, let's create a quick curve adjustment layer, increase it to something like that. Because what I would like to do is I would like to in, uh, give some brightness or some more brightness to the tree itself. So I'm going to make that nice and small. And with an opacity of 30%, I'm going to bring that additional brightness through very roughly, just to be a little bit faster, uh, into the stem of the tree itself. Okay, make sure I don't have the edges too much. All right, and we can actually do this even once more, just to make sure that everything is nice and visible. And we can also bring some of that brightness through in the canopy itself, just like that just to make sure there is actually some light around that uh, around that tree. Let's smooth that out to the sides a little bit as well. Okay, that just lightens up the whole situation a little bit, which is something I actually very much like. Awesome. What we can try now is we can try to work a little bit with level adjustment layers. And uh, in order to do so, let's create a level adjustment. And let's just start playing around. My ultimate goal is I want these area or these lines here on the ground to be incredibly visible. So if I drag the midtone slider to the right a little bit and then come down with the, the whites, I should achieve sooner or later exactly that. And I'm seriously only looking at the front part right now, only at this part here in the foreground, not the sky, because sky, well, you can see what's happening. Okay, let's bring that even in a little bit more. Maybe something like that. Okay, that could work. Let's invert that painting command and I on the keyboard and let's bring that through using the brush again and just bring it through with an opacity of about 30% and I start painting over these lines here and you can see that they're coming out nicely and strong. So the intensity of these kind of stripes is increased a lot, which is kind of cool. I think it's kind of a cool effect. Uh, also, we're getting some artifacts here. So we're getting some stuff we actually do not want to have brighter, such as, uh, you know, these kind of little, little tiny things here. But in order to get rid of them, we don't have to do much. I'll show you in one second. But before we do so, we should take care a little bit more of that sky. So what I would like to do, I'm going to darken down the top area a little bit. For that, I'm just going to use a simple curve adjustment layer as usual and bring it down. And bring it down to something like something like this. That's actually not bad at all. Let's invert that hitting Command and I in the keyboard. Use the brush, make it incredibly large. And with an opacity of 20%, I'm just going to bring that decreased brightness or increased darkness through in the sky. Okay, to something like that. I kind of like that. Even darker, oh yeah, that's good. Cool, let's leave it like that, something like that. And uh, I'll also, I also like what it did to parts of the cloud, so I'm gonna go with 20%. I'm just gonna accentuate these kind of areas on the side here a little bit, maybe also this little tiny piece. And why not these areas over here, and maybe that cloud, and this one there. 
cool. So now we have a pretty, pretty nice sky and I like these kind of rays which go out from these particular clouds there. Nicely done. Now, there's not much to, uh, there's not too much left to do for us here. What we can do, or what I did at least in original processing, was spending like an hour and creating 100,000 curve adjustment layers just to make sure I have the brightness everywhere I need. So that's, I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. Invert that hitting command and I, and with my brush, which I make nice and large, and an opacity and 30%, I'm going to make sure that I actually decrease the brightness on these sides here a little bit more. They're still drawing a little bit too much attention. Also, we could theoretically, I suppose, decrease the brightness just a little bit in these background areas here. They're just a little bit too bright for my taste. Something like that. And of course, we have to do the same thing in between the tree. Not too much. I'm just going to do a very, very rough and quick job here. But you get the idea, of course. But I mean, I suppose lighting is always something very personal. You're going to have to decide how far you want to go with darkening stuff. But that is up to you. Cool. Now, let's just create another stamp visible hitting Command, Alt, Shift, and E. I'm going to go in. I'm going to go down. I'm going to have a look at these tiny, tiny things here, right? So we have different options. We could uh, try using the spot hitting brush tool, which normally does the trick. So if I just click on it, yeah, that's not bad. It does it very well. Uh, otherwise, we could also use the patch tool where we just have to sort of circle around the faulty areas, drag it to somewhere else, and it's going to disappear also. For whatever reason, today I feel more like this tool. Why wouldn't I, I guess? And so what I'm going to do, or what, you know, at least I did, is going through manually these tiny little bumps here which are drawing too much attention and just dragging them out and removing them as I go along. I also did this, of course, not just in the dark areas, but also in areas in the image which are kind of lit up. Um, but you want to make sure that the image looks a little bit clean at least, right? We don't want to have some weird, wasteful stuff in there. Cool. And there we go. And that is all. Uh, no, that is not exactly all. Let's do one more thing. Let's um, repeat the levels exercise we have done before. Maybe just something like... Maybe just something like that wouldn't be bad. Um, hide it by hitting Command and I on the keyboard. I'm going to go back in onto these lines here. Down here, and I'm gonna with my brush and an opacity of say 40%, I'm gonna bring even more brightness into these particular lines. Why do I do that? Because I think it looks really cool. I don't know if these are really they're popping. You know what I mean? These lines are popping out of that image, and that's exactly what I like about it. As I said, it's a very random image, but I think it's a pretty cool effect. Uh, a little bit here, a little bit there. Awesome. And theoretically, if one wanted to, you could make those words. One could also get rid of these kind of corner areas here because there's some white grainy stuff. So you can either use the stamp tool and just go over it or even just use a curve adjustment layer, uh, bring it down and then invert that, go in with the brush once more and oh, that's a little bit too much and with an opacity of 20% just you know start painting over these areas to draw the attention away from them. But that's completely up to you. Um, I don't think I have to do this right now right here. It would just take quite a while. But now I started while I was talking, and I think I can talk a little bit longer just, you know, to get get some more time into this video. I'm just kidding. We're actually completely done. And that is all I had to do for this particular uh, image of this amazing tree on a random, random car park with an amazing sky. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you did like the video, please do not forget to hit that thumbs up button. And also, if you haven't already and you're new, don't forget to subscribe. It helps out a lot. Thank you very much, guys. If you have any questions or comments, always pop them down in any comment section on the blog or the, the, the channel or any kind of social media because I'm kind of everywhere. Pop them down. I'm happy to help out or answer or just chat, just talk. That's, sometimes that's great as well. Awesome, guys. I'll see you the next time. Have a good one. Bye.